Hello, Lauren here with Lauren Elizabeth Animal Art, and I create therapeutic animal art tutorials for daily creative quiet time. I'm on day 23 of my 365 days of color. I do this first thing in the morning before the kids wake up with my cup of coffee and I just love it. And one morning I did this queen froggy inspired by my diva daughter, Anna Grace. This is a highly requested beginner level tutorial done in all acrylic paint. And you're welcome to also use acrylic paint markers like I did, but it's not mandatory. All right, let's get started. So you can access this traceable individually in a link below, or if you'd like to access all my old and upcoming YouTube channel traceables, reference photos, and material lists, you can find all those in one place in my Dachshund tier, also linked down below. Now today's verse comes from the book of Luke 16.10. Whoever can be trusted with small things can also be trusted with big things. Now it sounds so easy, right? Especially because those big changes and those big large projects can be intimidating. But actually it's in those small, little, silly, sometimes annoying, ridiculous acts that seem so insignificant that God wants to use to work wonders in our marriage, in our work, in our finances, even in our art. So it's the little things like saying thank you or paying for someone's coffee behind you or making your bet, or really listening to a friend, or taking the trash out, or signing your artwork. The Lord sees all those small things, and they matter to Him. And so if we can be faithful with those little things that people don't see, or maybe don't acknowledge, we can then be trusted with those larger things. Like we all learned from that movie Frozen, just do the next small right thing. I feel like I really need to shout out the teachers and nurses and mothers and doctors who are working so dang hard right now. I can imagine these people feel overwhelmed, burnt out, fed up, but I just wanna remind you that those little steps do count. The little steps will shorten the distance and they help to build our strength. So stay the course, be humble, doing the right thing, one small step at a time. So as I finish getting set up here with my paints, let's all take five deep breaths in and out Let's just relax, get a cup of coffee, get comfy, and let's get ready to paint. All right, so starting with our background, I'm gonna use my Arteza size 11 flat brush. And for the background color, I'm gonna use my violet with phthalo blue and white. I'm gonna mix up a good amount of this, but I'll have kind of different variations of this color in the background. I wanna make sure my brush is clean and damp before I grab and mix the colors. But in the upper left-hand corner, I want it more blue. As I move to the right, I'm gonna add in more violet. And then as I move to the bottom right, I'm gonna add more white and blend that in straight on my canvas with nice loose brush strokes. Now, as we paint around our queen froggy, we wanna leave a white space for where we're gonna paint our leaf. And I want to give you full freedom to create any size, shape, or color leaf you want this frog to be resting on. But I want it thicker towards the lower left-hand side and the tip of end of that leaf on the upper right-hand side. Not quite going off the canvas, but almost.
To get in all the nooks and crannies, I'm going to use my size 2 Arteza Filbert brush to work around that crown. Until winter comes, until winter comes, it really makes me wonder. Yeah, it makes me wonder. It really makes me wonder. Oh, I wonder. Now once you've painted your background and you've sectioned off where you want that leaf to go, give it about five minutes or a little less to dry or become tacky before painting in that leaf. 
and that's what we'll be doing next. Now, if you'd like to learn how to paint your household pets in a colorful style and or accept pet portrait commissions, I invite you to try my online animal art masterclass. Last month, I just uploaded my new pet portrait commission course. I also have over 100 pet and wildlife painting tutorials, and each month I'm adding new pet and wildlife tutorials that you can even vote on in the private masterclass Facebook group. So if this would bless your mental health or a friend's, check out the link down below. Next, I'll grab my size 6 Arteza flat brush, and I'm going to mix up the colors grass green and cadmium yellow. Now I'm going to make the light source a little different in our painting than what we're seeing in the reference photo, more on the far left. And so I want the left side of the frog to be much brighter, more vibrant in color, as well as the left side of my leaf. Therefore, the right side of the leaf below the frog I'll be using lots of grass green and very little cadmium yellow. Now, as you can see, while I'm filling in the white, I'm also trying to define where that leaf is. So I find it easier to use my size six flat brush just to fill in the largest areas and also create the outer edge of that leaf. And then I'll go in with a smaller brush to go in and around those little toes. I still push my luck though, but eventually I'll move to a size two filbert brush to do those small areas. Now don't be discouraged if you're new to my tutorials, you probably haven't heard me talk about how frustrating the color green can be when painting acrylics because it just seems to always be so transparent no matter what brand of paint you're using. And you'll see later in this tutorial that I do end up applying another coat to the, this leaf, actually I think three, just to get it really rich in color the dark area is dark and the light area is light. I find whenever I'm using acrylics at the very end, I apply several layers just to bring out that color.
All right, so let's start working on Queen Froggy. I'm gonna use my size one round brush and the color black, and I'm gonna outline the eye and fill in that pupil. All right, so if you're a beginner, I often talk a lot in my tutorials about finding your dark, medium, and light values. So I'm gonna make it a little easier on you. We're gonna mix those up all at once, three different colors using our cadmium yellow, our orange, our yellow ochre, and white. So the first one is our medium value, right there in between our darkest and our highlights, and that's cadmium yellow and orange. That's cadmium yellow and orange, a good amount. When we have our medium value, we can better gauge our dark and our lights. So I'm gonna work on the dark color now of yellow ochre, orange, and yellow. That's yellow ochre, cadmium yellow, and orange. Now we want that to be darker than the medium value we just mixed up. So I'm gonna mix in some violet into that because the complement of yellow is purple. And this is a great way to darken up that color without making it look too muddy. Now we just need an itty bitty amount of that, not too much. Violet goes a very long way because it's such a dominant color, especially over yellow and orange. Now for our third color, the highlight, we wanna make sure our brush is clean and damp. You don't want it to be dirty with the other colors or else we won't be able to make that a lighter value. And I'm gonna pull in some gold into this. Arteza gold, cabin yellow, and white. Lovely, we have our three colors, our dark, our medium, and our light value. And now with my size four round brush, I'm gonna fill in or block in all of the darkest areas that I see on our frog. Now again, I altered the light source so it's now coming from the left side instead of the right side like we see in our reference photo. So wherever you see little indents or crevices or to the right of the frog, those areas will all be the darkest. So we're gonna be adding this color to those areas.
Now I spotted an area where we can go one shade darker. So what I'm going to do is just with a little bit more of my yellow ochre and some more violet, I'm going to add this color carefully to the two left toes on the right arm. All right, it's time to wash out our brushes thoroughly so we can move on to that second color going just a little bit lighter. That's how we want to work. Dark to light, very gradually, is, is how we're going to create those three-dimensional animals. Now I want to note here, on the limbs, I leave a lot of white left because I want to use my highlight color that we mixed up to fill that area in. But around the body and face of the frog, you'll see that I just connect my dark values to my medium value. Some areas I blend in, but other areas I just kind of block in. Allow this to be a learning experience, kind of like a study. It doesn't have to be perfect. With acrylics, you can always paint over it or make adjustments at the end. Nothing is ever a fixed mistake here. Now I also want to note here, I'm working around the spots. We're going to use our purples to fill those in.
All right, I'm gonna wash up my brush and actually switch to a size one round brush to get into these smaller areas. We're gonna move to our third paint mixture, the highlight, and we're just gonna fill in all the lightest areas. Oftentimes with our medium values and almost always with our highlights, we'll be dabbing and layering color over top the previous layers. And you can see I'm not fully trying to blend in or get rid of all the bottom layers. I'm just trying to do little dabs so that I can, it shows where the highlights are hitting the frog, but it still shows the curves and the indents in the frogs from the shadows and the medium values. Now there's a few areas that I missed with our medium value, more of that orange color. So I'm gonna go back to that color and just do a few dabs here and there. And so you'll see I'll kinda alternate between my medium value and my light value. Now the last bit I want to make sure I get before we move on to our purple spots and stripes is with my lightest value I'm going to highlight the areas above the eye. Now because that little smile I really want to draw attention to it and because it sticks out like the frog in a reference photo. I'm gonna mix up a lot more white into our light mixture. This is our lightest value, and I'm gonna highlight the entire smile. I'll still use this color to pull out the highlight on the top left of that eye. Now here's a neat way to make brown. I'm gonna pick up my size two filbert 
Arteza brush and mix up violet with orange. This really makes a, a beautiful vibrant brown that I'm going to use to go into all the really major shadows on the frog. Now if the light is hitting the left of the frog because I altered the light source, then everything to the right will have that shadow. Not all of it will have this extreme dark shadow, but around the indents in the back of the frog, to the right of the legs, to the right of the crown that's casting a shadow, and below the mouth. Oh, I love this part so much because it really just makes that orange and yellow look more vibrant, complements these colors so well with our violet. So that's white and violet, and I'm going to fill in all the white left on the frog except for the eye and the crown. So that's a little bit of white with violet, not very much white, so all the stripes and spots on the frog will use this color to fill those in.
Now I went ahead towards the end and added a few more spots. I just felt like there were some areas that needed a few more markings. Now I'm adding this gorgeous fluorescent pink to my paint palette and while that violet is still wet or slightly tacky, I'm going to go in and just highlight a lot of the areas to the left of the frog with this pink. Using my size 1 round brush, I'm going to mix just a very small amount of my violet, white, and lots of my fluorescent pink. And so all the areas to the left, on the spots, nowhere else, just on these purple spots and stripes, I'll add this pink too. Now make sure you thoroughly wash out your brush because we don't want that any of that violet getting into our next color of gold, white, and yellow ochre. That's Arteza Gold, White, and Yellow Ochre. And I'm going to use this color to fill in the entire eye, aside from the pupil of course. And I just want to say the next color that we'll add to this eye, we want to add while this is still wet. So make sure you're doing the next couple steps while this is wet. And that next color will be violet because if you look really closely at that eye you'll see a shadow and the funny thing is I got that shadow correct according to our reference photo but wrong according to light source in our painting it's on the left of the eye but in our painting it should be on the right so when you're doing this make sure you add the shadow to the right side not like I painted it it still looks fine but actually it's not quite accurate when you're painting your animal portraits, all your shadows should be on the opposite side of where that light source is hitting. And that should reflect in all your colors all over your portrait, not just in some areas.
Now you may need your rigger brush here because if you notice really, really small outline around the pupil of gold, that gold color we made, there should be a line, an outline just around the pupil so the purple shouldn't touch that. So if you need to go over that now, make sure you do. And because I went over that pupil just a little bit with my colors, I'm going to touch it up with my black. And while we have our black, let's use it to fill in that little nostril. I see that it needs to be just slightly darker beneath that mouth. So with just violet, I'm going to create a dark shadow beneath that very light smile. Now next we'll be painting the crown. But my thought process about the color I chose for this crown, which is a lavender, is because I can't go with gold again. It'll just get lost in the frog. I can't go with gray because that's just too boring. And I thought of a light lavender to pull out the, the light purples in the background, as well as a little bit of those light purples in the frog. And I want this really light, so very little amount of violet to lots of white. And I'm going to work on the outside of the crown first and then move to the inside. And when I do move to the inside, I'm going to add in more violet because we want that to be darker. It's getting less light. So on the very inside of that crown, it's going to be a darker violet. Now the area that I can add this light purple to the inside of the crown is just on those two little top parts. I don't really know what you would call that. Top parts of the crown. And then as I move down, I'll add in more violet. Now after I added the darker purple inside the crown, I noticed that I can just go slightly lighter to really add contrast to that crown on the outside. So I will make it slightly lighter by adding in more white. Also, in just a little bit, I'll be adding more of that fluorescent pink 
into the front of the crown. Just another way I can add more color and it pulls out the pinks to the left of the frog. And it's very subtle, so that's just with fluorescent pink into this very light purple. I do this a lot where I want to blend my colors and so I'll just literally add paint to my canvas. I won't blend the colors on my paint palette. I'll just figure out the right color on my canvas. Because the top of that eye is casting just the smallest little shadow on the crown, I'm going to add the smallest little purple behind it. And then I'll again wash on my brush very thoroughly and just with white, add two little dots on that eye to the left of the eye. I got that part right on the eye and that's inside the pupil. Okay, just two little dabs will do ya and that's on the very left of the pupil. I really wanted to complement the greens in this painting, so I wanted to pull in more of my fluorescent pink. I pulled some more into the crown as well as the frog, just taking straight fluorescent pink. Now something I say quite a bit in my master class is to make sure the background's complete or almost complete before applying the things to the foreground, like the details that we want to add, the outline to the crown. I want to not add that until I know my background's done. So I'll add another layer of color with my blues in the upper left, my dark purples in the upper right, and then more my light purples in the lower right.
Now, whether you're using white acrylic paint or an Arteza acrylic marker like I am, you want this to be dry before doing that, not even tacky. So give it about five, 10 minutes to dry before going in with your marker or paint. All right, so my canvas is dry. I've got my Arteza acrylic paint marker, or you can grab just plain white paint and a very thin brush, like a rigor brush or liner brush, and let's go in and outline our crown. I've really gotten into these paint markers lately. I just finished a painting that I call Inner Glow, and I finished it off with this exact marker. I used colored pencils, Copic markers for the main layers, and then this is how I embellished it. It's just a great way to really make the colors I want to stand out more bold. I've also included a link to this exact set that I use by Arteza down below. So at this point, I noticed that I left out a few black lines around the eyes that I need to make sure I put in. This is like right along the plane of where the pupil is. These black lines that I'm going to fill in with my rigor brush. Now, do you remember how we made that beautiful brown? That's with our violet and our orange. And so I'm gonna mix up more of this color and really, again, go in with more of our shadows. I still think we need more, especially right above this eye. I am currently using my size one round brush. And if you watch me, I'll just add more shadows that we definitely need to the right of the frog and around where we have the limbs. All right, so next I'm gonna grab my size six flat brush and I want to add another layer of green to the leaf. I'm just repeating the exact same thing I did at the beginning when I first applied our first base coat and I wanna add lots of grass green to the right of the leaf to keep it dark and then to the left of the leaf that'll have a lot more cadmium yellow.
Now while we let that leaf dry, let's work on the stars. Using just white and my rigger brush, I'm going to create tiny little dots all over the blue and purple background. Some are going to be big, some small, some are going to be close together, and others spread apart. Now I'm going to do a little shooting star above the crown where I start with a little dot and then I move my brush slightly to the right as I pick up my brush relieving off the pressure and voila there's the froggy's wishing star.
All right, so the last and final step, aside from any final touches you want to add at the end, is the indent in our leaf. I love my filbert brush. I'm going to go back to my size 2 filbert brush, and with grass green I'll make the indent starting from beneath the frog's belly and below that back leg and the little toes. I'm just going to carry on that line down going off my canvas. I want to blend some of my light green and my medium greens into this dark green and just smooth it out in just a little bit. So I'm going to pull that up. I'm also going to apply more grass green to the patchy spotty area to the right of the leaf. And then while that indent in the leaf is still relatively wet, I'm going to mix up yellow into my grass green and on my canvas just blend that together. So if you're wondering, this is Anna Grace. <laughs> she's got her Peppa Pig, her sponge, and she's wearing her blue, her blue gloves. Oh my goodness. She has so much personality. I, I tell you, she is the diva behind this painting. See how I'm doing this? I'm just blending it straight onto my canvas. I want that medium green to meet with that dark green indent, and then it gets even lighter to the left of that. It really took quite a bit of layers of yellow added to this green to make that the both left and right sides of the leaf stand out and then the outer edge of the leaf being darker green and then of course that indent being darker green. All right creatives, so here until the end of the tutorial, Anna Grace and I are just working on this leaf. You can add any final touches you want to add maybe to your frog or the more stars to your background but I'm just gonna work on this leaf and call it quits. And don't forget to sign your work. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below. I am more than happy to help. But guys, I hope you enjoyed this one. Have a blessed day. Bye.